Construction in Blender might seem overwhelming to learn at first, but it's super simple once you know the fundamentals. We're going to recreate this scene here from the ground up. So grab a cube and scale it down to roughly this size. Apply the scale and now we're going to draw a kind of spider web on top with the annotation tool. This will be the guide for the cell fracture that we're about to create. Once you're happy with your drawing, click on object, quick effects, cell fracture, and in the settings, change the type from own particles to annotation tool. Now we want to increase the amount of rubble. I went with 200 for the source limit. And lastly, we want to set the shadow limit to zero. Hit OK and you should have a bunch of shattered, fractured pieces to start working with. We now want to apply rigid bodies to all of these objects. So with them all selected, come up to Object, Rigid Bodies and add Active. Once done, test that this is working and now we need to make a container to hold all the pieces. So with the original cube we created, bring this below the fractured objects and edit the top face by insetting it and extruding a border to encapsulate all of the objects. Now we can apply a passive rigid body to the cube. Make sure the bound is set to mesh, not to convex hull, otherwise you'll get some weird wacky results. Okay, so we're nearly done with creating the rubble. We now need to glue all the pieces together so that we can smash them apart with another object. This step is super powerful, watch this. First, select all the fractured objects, come up to the object dropdown, Select rigid bodies and click the connect button. This will create a bunch of tether constraints that will glue all the pieces together. So before doing anything else, we want to open up this pop-up window in the bottom left and change the connection pattern type to chain by distance. Awesome, so the next step is to select all the constraints that were just made. And in the physics tab, we now have this breakable checkbox. So make sure this is enabled and also make sure to right click the checkbox and hit that copy to selected button. The slider below determines how easily the objects will break apart depending on the amount of force, but we can fiddle around with that later on if need be. Now we need something to crash into the floor. Since this is a ground impact shot for me, I went with a torus. So set up some simple keyframes of the torus crashing into the floor and apply an active rigid body to this object. Also make sure to enable the animated checkbox. Now is the time to run the simulation and see if it looks good. If you're happy with the result, you can call it there, bake it to a cache, and begin putting the final touches onto the scene. These last two elements will add that extra bit of spice to your scene. The first is debris. Let's add in a sphere and squish it down and also delete the bottom half of it. Bring this object to the point of impact in your scene, just below the surface, and now we can add a particle system to it. Leave this on emitter and change the start frame to be the frame of impact and the end frame to be one frame after this. We're basically just making an explosion of debris. Next, we want to play with the particle's normal velocity. Change this to something like five to seven meters and also add in some rotational velocity. Once you're happy with that, the last step is to change what the particles are rendering as. So create a new collection called particles and throw in two icospheres. I use proportional edit mode to change the look and feel of my icospheres for that extra bit of detail. All that's left to do is change the render option from halo to collection and bake the particle system to a cache. Obviously we need a character. So jump onto Mixamo and choose an animation that suits your scene. I went with this one. Once downloaded, just import this into your scene and move the keyframes forward until the moment of impact. The last thing you need to do is set up a simple scene with lighting and hit that render button. And there you have it, super simple, easy ground destruction in Blender. If you like this video, you'll love this one here explaining the five things you shouldn't do when starting out in Blender.